Here's a take. I'm sick of working from home. It's boring, it's lonely, and it disrupts my work-life balance, which is why we became members of the Shop Coworking Space on 400 South. From the latte bar to the rooftop fire pit, it still has the comforts of home, but with the pieces you need to be productive, like private phone booths and giant monitors to plug your laptop into. Try it out with a free day pass. Just come by the shop and tell them CityCast sent you. Visit shopworkspace.com for a virtual tour. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. One of the reasons we live in a city is the promise of accessibility, right? In a dream scenario, you're 15 minutes from everything you need. But the truth is, making urban transit more accessible is a fight decades in the making. And disability advocate and wheelchair user Shelby Hinsey is here to tell us why better streets are worth getting arrested for. It's Monday, March 13th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Shelby Hinsey, friend of the show. You and I are here to talk about modern day transit accessibility, but before we get into the modern day, you're going to give us a little history lesson on a local activist whose influence can be felt every day in how people with disabilities move around this city. It is Women's History Month after all. Yes, totally. I love history. I am such a nerd. And I love history of like normal people. And so I love the story of Barbara Toomer. Barbara Toomer was a nurse in the 50s and she got married and had a baby. And after she had her first baby, she contracted polio. And so she used a wheelchair for the rest of her life. And it was really interesting to me in some of her you know, interviews and things, she talked about how her dad like wouldn't even come see her in the hospital because oh. he couldn't he couldn't stand seeing her in that condition. And that's when she realized like there are going to be places that I'm not welcome, and it's going to be because people don't want me there. Right. Everything didn't just shift in how I interact with the world, but how the world interacts with me. Totally. And, you know, that is obviously like a horrible thing that happened, but it also is like maybe not quite that extreme, but that kind of stuff happens still. But she went on to, she continued working. She had more kids. Like she lived this really full, like awesome life. And she became a really staunch advocate for the disability community. And her biggest, I would say, focus on that was transportation. Mm -hmm. So she helped found the Utah Center for Independent Living, which helps people acquire equipment and is a good warehouse almost, I would say, for information of mm -hmm. like, okay, what's available? Who do I talk to? How do I handle all of these things that you know, most people don't even have to think twice about? Right. Well, and I imagine also like in the... I guess maybe I'm placing us now like 60s, 70s, having a resource for independent living would be an important alternative to being institutionalized. Yeah, totally. If you want to understand that, like looking up like institutions in the 60s and 70s, it's pretty horrific. But yeah, so she focused so much on transportation, though. I think my my favorite little fact about her is she was arrested like 35 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I, I like have a goal to be arrested sometime for like being for protesting or something hasn't happened yet. Um, it will. There's time we could get you arrested. Maybe we'll do it for the show. Oh my gosh. Sign me up. But she, they like organized, um, crawl ons. So they had people like crawl onto the buses. She was also from what we know, she was the only Utahan to participate in the Capitol crawl which helped pass the Americans with Disabilities Act. Okay. It was this just like huge media event where all of these disabled people sat at the Capitol and crawled up the steps to show like, this is what it takes for us to access even the halls of Congress. So she did a lot to make sure that our public transportation became accessible. And it is now, it, 
there's still a long way to go, but the the bones are there now. And it's because of her and other activists like her that just said, no, we're not going to deal with this anymore. Yeah. Well, in the wake of Barbara Toomer versus Utah Transit Authority, <laughs> decades of, I want to know, like, you know, you brought up her legacy. What's changed and what hasn't? Like, how would you assess where we are now in light of Barbara's legacy? Yeah. So I think that, you know, there's been a lot of things within Salt Lake, especially, you know, that have been difficult. I think I want to start with the fact that, you know, a bus is accessible to someone on a wheelchair in a wheelchair now, almost always. The the bus stop is not always super accessible. Mm. Um, there's snow, there's grass things like that, it's getting better. But then just on top of that, there's this, especially for people who live outside of the downtown area, there's not a ton of access to public transportation either. And a lot of folks, uh, one of the things, another thing Barbara helped with was keeping fares low for paratransit, which is a great resource. And I won't get into all of the specifics on it, but it's not a very flexible resource. It is a very, it's only available to you if you have the time to sit around and wait and, and you have the time and the ability to get to an appointment two hours early because that's when they can come pick you up. It's not a, oh, my ride fell through. I need to call up paratransit and get a ride or things like that. It's not as on demand as getting like an Uber or a Lyft, which is those charges can add up quickly. Right. So I think, you know, we still... For anybody that's outside of you know downtown, it's available, but it's really difficult and it's really not entirely practical to access. And then within downtown, you know, within the last couple of years, the biggest problem that I've been having getting around is just sidewalks being closed. So it's, you know, we have public transportation available, but can you even get to it? The other day over by Liberty Park, I needed to cross one street, but the sidewalk was closed and the curb cut was cut out. So I had to go all the way. I had to cross, cross, cross to get to where I was going Mm -hmm. instead of just the one time across the street. So it's things like that, that, and you know, when it happens every once in a while, yeah, that's fine. But when that is happening all the time, it really adds up to your stamina and it gets to the point where it's just not worth worrying about it. And it's like, yeah, just, let's just not go. This episode is brought to you by Blizzard. Play Diablo 4 free during the open beta weekend. Only you can stand in the way of the forces of hell. Play free March 24th to 26th and pre-purchase for early access. Journey through the entire first act. Battle up to level 25 as all five classes. Adventure with your friends in four-player co-op. Descend into hell early during the open beta. Pre-purchase Diablo 4 now. Well, I mean, the sidewalk thing just across the board sucks. And I, I'm curious what you would say is the biggest contributing factor. In my experience, it's been construction. It's been like sidewalks are closed because of construction. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it kills me that we have such incredibly wide roads and we can't take one lane <laughs> to do a protected sidewalk. Mm-hmm. That's a big part of it. And then, you know, it's also just not knowing when the sidewalks are going to be closed. Just the other day when I was trying to get around, we were, you know, we had driven and parked and then we were going to walk to a restaurant and we were like, um, is it closed? We had to drive by it a few times to see like, okay, is the, is the sidewalk open? Is it closed? Okay. It's closed. That's going to dictate where we park. Mm. And so that just adds a whole nother level of like, well, or, and, and it's hard to just say like, all right, let's just go and we'll figure it out as we get there. Um, this year, the snow has been really bad. I've been pleasantly surprised with folks clearing their sidewalks this year. So that's, that's been good, but I know it's still totally an issue. And, and a lot of times, you know, the snow will get 
piled up in front of the curb cut or it'll get piled up on at the bus stop or in the dashed lines next to the accessible spot parking spot because those are just viewed as you know open spaces and not really integral parts of people getting around yeah well and similarly when the snow starts to melt right you get those like just like mini tide pools in front of the curbs which are a menace yeah. also lead producer emily means brings this up all the time on this show but like her biggest salt lake like bone to pick with salt getting around Salt Lake is we get a drop of rain and it feels like all of our intersections start to flood, like yeah. getting across from curb to curb when it's when it's flooding and rushing and like our drains are backing up and all of these things that, you know, are about so much more than just whether or not the sidewalk is cleared. Right. Well, and then this is something I think a lot of people don't think about and And I don't even think about it half the time until I'm in the situation. You know, it's not like I can just take the tires off my chair when I come in some into the house. Mm -hmm. If I get mud on my tires, we have to scrub them. And so if I have to, you know, go through a mud puddle or go on to the parking strip, the grassy parking strip, because the sidewalk is blocked also blocked a lot by scooters. Don't leave your scooters in the middle of the sidewalk. Um, So there's things like that, that it's like, oh yeah, now I either I'm going to track a bunch of mud into my house or we're going to spend 20 minutes with a little scrub brush and the hose scrubbing my tires. And that's why I just don't go outside. But (laughs) but that's, yeah, that's another big thing. And And, you know, I have a lot of privilege in that I can avoid a lot of that because I have, I work from home. I have an accessible van that allows me to, if someone else has to drive it, but I at least can be warm inside and, and not have to worry about some of those puddles. But my life would be so much easier if that was a, a more reasonable option to get around between public transportation and just being able to walk places. Well, I want to ask you about, it feels like sometimes the conversation around increasing accessibility in the city for everyone ends up in this place where we're talking about increasing accessibility in the city for people who are walking and people who are on bikes. Right. And do you ever look at some of those plans or those theories and think, okay, this does make the city more accessible for pedestrians and bikes, but not necessarily a wheelchair user. Right. And well, and that's a huge thing that, you know, sometimes is thought of and sometimes isn't. It needs to be something that is added into there as well. And um, we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, there's so many places that are like, yeah, we have this like walkable area and that's awesome. But how do you get to it? If you don't live close enough to walk to the walkable area, is there public transportation? Is there a place to park? You know, I would love to see more areas where I can park once downtown and get out and walk to a store, to a restaurant, to a doctor's appointment, and, you know, kind of batch my errands like that, because that that makes it a lot easier for me to get around. You know, we have a great grocery store, you know, in a walkable area. How do you get those groceries home? And when you think about how does this impact a person with a disability, it's going to make it easier for everyone as well. Um, Mm. It's very, very rarely does that kind of inclusive design then exclude able-bodied people. It it really doesn't. Yeah. I want to ask you, because I feel like it's something that a lot of Salt Lakers are talking about right now, the city announced that they're exploring the possibility of the Open Streets program forever, which would close potentially all of or a part of between Main Street, between South Temple and 400 South to be pedestrian only. Right. In the spectrum you've sort of outlined for us of walkable to walkable but not accessible, where does that plan fall? So I love the idea. I think a couple things that need to happen for it to really work. Um, First of all, you need to still have accessible parking available close to places that 
people want to go. You know, if you have to park three blocks away and then walk, that is really difficult for some people. Another thing that I think is really important, and I do think from the few times that I went down there when they were doing on the trial basis, Mm -hmm. um, they did have ramps throughout the sidewalk so that you could get off the sidewalk without having to go to a corner um, because that is so incredibly frustrating when you you are like, it's right there, but I have to go all the way down the block to get off the sidewalk. Um, So as long as that stays, that's another big thing. I think if, if it's done correctly and with input from disabled people, it can be a really cool and great way to create community and allow people a little bit more opportunity to mingle and be together. Well, to kind of bring it back a little bit to Barbara Toomer, I guess my last question for you is, what haven't we seen realized from Barbara Toomer's days? Like, if you can name one thing that you would like to see in Salt Lake City to make this city more accessible and just easier for you to get around, what would it be? I would love to see an expansion of our public transportation. I love tracks, but it's only as good as where it goes. And, you know, for me personally, like, tracks would be great to get me around once I'm already downtown. But if I'm not downtown, it's like, well, right. uh, so I, I just recently moved over to the West side in Reg Park. So I am now like, I mean, even before, but especially now I'm like bring tracks to the West side, <laughs> you know, other than just to the airport, you know, in my the neighborhood, I see people walking to and from work all the time. And I just think, ah, how great would that be if you could just go down your block and get on a tracks train and they come every 10 minutes and you just know it's go- it's going to be there. You know, we have a pretty robust bus system over here, but I also think that sometimes the bus system is a little more intimidating to folks. I think so too. And it takes more planning and and you have to how do you pay for it? And you have to talk to someone and, mm-hmm. and that can just be, I know that sounds really simple, but when, when you have so many other things that you have to think about and figure out, sometimes those kinds of burdens are just too much. But I think seeing that expanded, and then I think I'm going to, I know you said one, I'm going to add one more. Okay. I think also, you know, something that the city can really be doing is pushing that if Uber and Lyft want to work within Salt Lake, they need to be accessible. I think the biggest thing when I think about accessibility is does everyone have the same options? For some people, taking an Uber or a Lyft is too expensive, but you could still do it if you needed to. And so when it's not even, you don't even have the option to choose to use it or not use it, that choice is made for you. That's when I think, you know, we are not being as accessible as we can. You know, really encouraging these companies that want to, you know, work within our cities to say, no, if you're going to do that, you've got to, you got to help everybody. Shelby Hensi, disability advocate and amateur Barbara Toomer historian. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for your time. I learned a lot. Thanks. Last Wednesday, the CityCast Salt Lake team guest DJed on KRCL for International Women's Day. And you said, no, we want more Kylie Minogue. (laughs) So we made you a very chaotic Women's History Month Spotify playlist. It's got everything we played on air and all the songs we regretted not playing as soon as we left the studio. I dropped the link in the show notes. Enjoy. That's all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye.